Hello guys, today I'm going to talk to you about depth of field. This will be a very practical exercise. I'm not going to go into all the technical details, but I'm going to show you how you can use it to make your scene look much better and much more realistic so your renders look more creative and cinematic, okay? To find the depth of field option, you need to go to the properties of your ambience. Once you are here, you need to go to the camera settings. I'm here, I have created an image, a camera view, on which I will control this. This is very important because this will allow you to have the focal length. It means you can control the length of your camera using this field of view value, but when you create a camera view as such, you will have access to use these focal length options. This is very important because depth of field, we are going to see now, it's very related to the lens focal length, okay? In here you will find this tab called depth of field, you can enable it by clicking in here and the first thing you will notice is that some things get blurred. Because what this depth of field is doing is creating this depth by blurring some things that are not in the focus on the camera and those things that are in the target of it will be focused in the view. And we can control what's the focus of our camera by using one of these two options. The first is the distance one, but it will allow you to manually select it by a distance that we have here. This is very useful when you have some clarity about the distance that's between your camera lens and the object that you want to focus to. For example, select your 50 uh, meter one meter and a half, oh, sorry, one meter and a half will be 150 centimeter and you can start seeing how the objects that are at this distance start to get focused. But you can also use this pick focus element if you click on it and now select any of the objects of this scene, well, the camera will automatically focus to that object as you can see here so that's very interesting it's actually very nice to use it because you can try different camera view selecting different elements and it's very quick since we are using a uh, lumen which is making all the changes in real time this is this distance element is also useful in case you want to create a scenes where everything is blurred. This is very interesting. You will notice when doing animations. I'll show you in a bit, okay? But for now, let's try to make a still image where this dining room is focused and the behind of it is blurred, okay? So I'm going to select for now this part here. And if you notice, if I want to make all the dining room elements, I mean the chair, the table, the lamp to be in the focus of the camera, I'm failing because if I select this, then the chair get blurred. If I select, select the chair, then all the elements from the back get blurred too. And here's where it's very important to use the aperture element. In practical terms, what this allows us is to control how much or how, how the intensity of the effect is being done. At first, you'll, you'll get confused because what it's doing is making the scene mo look much darker because when having a real camera the aperture works hand in hand with exposure it will uh, change how much light is entering to the lens of our camera but you can use since we are doing 3d rendering this is not real life but a computer generated image you can use this do not affect exposure and this will allow you to control the effect how blurry things will be in the background without affecting the exposure just focusing on the depth of field effect the blurring effect and if i decrease it you will notice that the elements that are blurred start to get focused too but little by little that's how you can control how blurred the elements in the back are and this will help us because we can select here a midpoint like here and now change a bit the aperture and now all the elements of my dining are completely focused but the elements in the back are still a bit blurred let's check here if we reduce all the aperture you can now see how all the elements in the back look completely sharp and this is how you can work with this there's also something very important that you need to keep in mind 
that as I mentioned before is the focal length if you are using a wide lens like for instance 17 millimeters mind that if you decrease this value what it will do is to in, so, in some type of way to expand the view that you have within your camera this is very useful for small spaces but if you are doing a shot that will use depth of field you need to keep in mind that this will diminish the intensity of how this depth of field effect is happening if you notice we have the exact same setting we can decrease here the aperture but the effect is not really visible in order to make it more noticeable you need to increase the focal length and as you can see now let's place it here around 35 the effect oh sorry the effect is now much more noticeable it will always be very important that you select a much higher focal length in order to have a much stronger effect now we can do this again we can increase a bit the aperture and here we have it or if we for instance want to make a shot where let's put it here the share is the main element we can select it here we can decrease the aperture and now everything else is blurred as you can see here okay and there's a last setting that you can control which is the bokeh shape let's focus something else here let's increase the value and you might say hey absolutely nothing it's happening and this is because the bokeh is related to how the lights that are shining in our scene are displayed when they are blurred as in this moment Maybe the lights that we have in our scene are these elements from the lamp. They are being in the focus of the camera. Nothing is happening. But let's decrease this distance to zero. And I know you can see it now. Look here how these bright elements, these lights that we have over here that are an emissive element. If we change the book a shape, look at that. Okay? It is changing how they are displayed when the depth of field is completely affecting them when they are completely out of focus you can control the shape they are displaying this effect that you can also do in photography but we can control it here easily with a slider okay so this is how we worked with the static images but what about videos okay so let's create a new video and something that you can do in here is to animate this this distance uh, slider is very useful to me because i can make everything blurred using this element I can uh, save the changes refresh the changes in here and I can now create a new element let's make it here and now change the distance to make this element completely in focus and then if we play this you'll see how little by little the camera is changing the focus that we have in our camera to, from going to this out of focus scene to this completely focused element of the dining chair and you can also do the opposite now let's go here create a new element and now let's get closer let's select this one here let's make this much stronger I think it's too strong. Okay, here it's refresh, and if you notice now, it's happening exactly the opposite. And this is how you can control this effect when doing animations too.